and the uh, recording has started. Welcome. This is the uh, <clears throat> Massachusetts Pirate Party bi-weekly meeting. Um, I will identify myself as James O'Keefe, captain of the Massachusetts Pirate Party. Um, if everyone else could identify, that would be great. Ahoy, this is Joseph Onorowski, the quartermaster and uh, i.e. the treasurer uh, for the Massachusetts Fire Party, and I am based out of Lowell, Massachusetts. Hey, all, this is Misty O'Neill. I'm representative for the U.S. Fire Party for Massachusetts, um, located in Boston. Steve Revelak, uh, first officer, um, based in Arlington. And I'm based in Somerville. So thank you all for joining. Um, so in terms of our agenda, uh, we have reports um, and uh, just checking in on the U.S. Power Party and other projects uh, that we're working on. Um, so uh, activism director is unfortunately not here, nor is PR media director. Quartermaster, what's your report? So I did a guest speaking event today at the Haverhill High School. That was a phenomenal experience where I get to reach out to young minds and just basically let them field a bunch of questions, you know, and got my chance to get my jabs at the Green Party and the Libertarian Party, as well, of course, the Republican and Democratic Party. Um, but on a more serious note, it was a really, really good experience. It was a good practice for me for public speaking. And I really think I connected us to why we're so much different than the big two and really differentiate what, what makes a pirate a pirate. And I definitely saw some kids who were interested in learning a lot more about who we are and what we're doing. So, you know, that <laughs> tomorrow's, today's students are tomorrow's losers. So I think it was a really good experience. I'd have to say, Mr. Jordan, does remember who you are, Jamie, uh, so that he remembers meeting you when you were back with the Green Party, you know, <laughs> and so uh, I got to talk about all sorts of things like individual autonomy and uh, pulling back the corporate, or how we're like anti-corporate copyright troll, anti-copyright troll, um, and really more of a science-based approach to politics where we really just want to see what works, what's not working, and, and make our judgments based accordingly. And that's really one of the big distinguishing effects of who we are, as well as the fact that we're one of the few parties that's actually an international party, with us having ties to the European Union and, and that, and seeing that we're much more of a global, a global phenom phenomenon. So that being said, on the more quartermaster front, outside of things definitely uh starting to work and pull all the stuff for the year for starting going through all the bank records to get everything all of my dots all my dots in a row and all my t's crossed so if you've done in kind um i would appreciate those sooner than later thanks joe oh, thanks joe no, <laughs> yeah, uh, do you remember Mr. Jordan? Uh, not off the top of my head, but I'm I'm sure um, if I think back sure hard enough, you recognize him. Probably. I'm very good with faces, not so much with names, unfortunately. Um, so just for everyone who's listening, and we do upload these to YouTube and, and hopefully other... Uh, other services in the future. Um, you can find us at masspirates.org. You can donate to us. Um, you can donate to us by the end of the year. You don't get a tax write-off, but you do get our everlasting thanks. <clears throat> um, and with that, uh, thank you, Joe, for, for meeting with um, students uh, in, in, was it Lowell, correct? No, it was uh, actually in Haverhill. In Haverhill. And I have to say that they, 
I'd have to say that that class was very respectful, very nice, and uh, I would do it again from Mr. Drone in a heartbeat. It was actually great. So nice. I really did enjoy just going down there. And um, from the politics that they've had in the past, uh, Mr. Drone was telling me about how it's like when Trahan came and went through and did politics with them, they were just bringing him a big check and it's like, oh, shake hands, oh, nice to meet you, but they didn't really get the depth of it like I did or had the opportunity to get it. So it was just a really good experience for me and hopefully the kids put something from it. So. Cool. Um, so for folks, again, listening, if you want to be a speaker on our behalf, um, feel free to contact us at info at masterpirates.org. Um, First, Joe, I mean, uh, sorry, Steve, do you have a report? Nothing, uh, nothing too, too dramatic. There's, um, you know, in, in terms of town politics, um, Arlington is, you know, we continue to move forward on uh, trying to get a, make ourselves compliant with the new requirements for MBTA community, uh, for multifamily zoning and NBTA communities. And um, I got a bunch of permit hearings on Monday night, so that should be fun. <laughs> nice. Can I ask you a question on that topic? Sure. So I heard today on the radio about MC and the updates that they're doing to the MBTA that it's it's something that it kind of just struck me completely odd, and I just wanted to hear what your feedback was on it. I heard it was um, when they do the repairs to make a better M uh, MBTA, it actually is against diversity because then it then housing becomes more accessible, and then by housing becoming more accessible, the cost of housing goes up, and then thus it's actually hurting minorities by us fixing the, the the system and i just it just i couldn't quite swallow that and it kind of blew my mind a little bit and i just wanted to know what your feedback was for, so for, it, I um, thought it would be the opposite well in terms of you know for the you know, a lot of the 20th century, um, you know, the sort of the ambition was to live in car oriented suburbs um, in urban areas. Living next to public transportation is a real asset and people are willing to pay for that. So, yeah, when you have when you do when you put in a, a train station, um, you do make an area more desirable. There's sort of a couple of pieces that have that really ought to go along with that is, you know, when you put in mass transit, you also want to, you know, ideally, since you've made that location a lot easier to get to, you want to also build more housing or, you know, more commercial development for jobs or whatever. Um, and but it does, you know, the fact that we don't have there's there's more demand for transit accessible locations than there are transit accessible locations. So yeah, the price can go up. And so part of this, you know, the strategy for, you know, the thought, the thought behind expanding um, transit service is, you know, also how do, you know, you want to, you want to have something in there to prevent displacement as well. That's the word I was looking for, displacement, you know, and they have an, another more like more catchy term for it that, you know, but well, that I don't want to necessarily repeat, but it, displacement describes it perfectly. And so that so, is a true statement. Then. It is. It is a true thing. I mean, unfortunately, it is you know, like so displacement is not unique to, you know, adding a new transit station. Um, basically, displacement happens when housing prices go up and people can't afford to live where they've been living. And one of the biggest factors be, that we've, you know, leading to leading to it is that 
you know, Eastern Massachusetts has been, you know, there's been a lot of, a lot of jobs, a lot of employment opportunities, and we have not kept up, kept pace with housing production. So yeah, even if, um, you know, you can have people priced out of a neighborhood without building a darn thing, it's just because there's demand and the price goes with it, goes up with it. And so that's one of the big things that you're facing right now, Steve, with the whole housing situation in Arlington, right? It's one of the things that you've been fighting for. One of the things that I've been fighting for, yes. I would like to, you know, I think it, it makes a lot of sense both, you know, socially and environmentally to, you know, to put more housing in areas that are kind of in demand where you've already done a fair amount of development and already have infrastructure, um, you know, put people close to where they work as opposed to, you know, greenfield development on the other side of 495 <laughs> um, and then asking someone to drive into, you know, inside of, you know, 128 every day. But yeah, that's, that's sort of, um, that's sort of, you know, a, a major, you know, a major focus of what I've been trying to do over the last uh, couple of years. Well, well certainly things... into, to that effect. Sorry, go ahead. No, that's you go, Joe. I was going to say Lowell's built a whole ton of different parking lots. And I think that's part of the solution that they've been having is a lot of people drive from the outer counties of Lowell, the greater Lowell area and slightly north of Lowell, park in Lowell and then take the train on into Boston. Mm hmm so I can, uh, I'm sure that there's quite a few outlying cities that are starting to do that because traffic into Boston is so bad nowadays. I have not driven a regular. I've not done a regular driving commute since 2004. That that is how much I dislike traffic in Eastern Massachusetts. <laughs> so you know, I don't know why anyone would put themselves through this if if you don't have to. Um, and fortunately, I've you know, manage to stay in situations where I don't have to. <laughs> the internet will disagree on whether Boston is number one or no, the number two most congested area in the uh, in the country, but we're definitely in the top two. The only thing I was going to add is recently the MBTA, just last Monday, uh, opened up the Green Line extension out to Medford, although functionally out to Tufts, unfortunately it doesn't go further into Medford. Um, so that's kind of right on the Somerville border and it Somerville now has a much larger number of MBTA stops, um, train stops as opposed to, to buses. And, you know, one of the things that would be useful since there's going to be demand in those areas, you know, if there was some sh surcharge we could put on sales prices or on taxes for saying you're within a certain distance. So we can then charge you more for taxes and then move, move that money into building additional housing. And no doubt the areas by the subways are going to get built up over time, um, which will lead to more people using the subway and less people driving, hopefully. Yeah, there's sort of um, <clears throat> two common strategies for doing that. Um, I know Somerville does at least one of them. The other one I'm not sure of. Uh, so one of them is uh, inclusionary zoning, which means that when you build a certain uh, an apartment or whatever with a certain number of homes in it, um, a percentage of those, and in your case, I believe it's 20%, have to be deed restricted to people at certain income levels. So, um, you know, you're sort of setting aside units at, um, you know, for lower cost. And basically the purse, the, the private market is subsidizing this, whoever's building the project. Um, although the city may have, sometimes cities have uh, their own pool of funding that they use to help subsidize these things. Cambridge uh, does this. The other, <clears throat> another, the other common strategy are what's called linkage fees. So this is usually done for commercial developments over a certain number of square feet. 
and you know it's a per square foot charge that's used for certain purposes like um, developing affordable housing, um, job programs, etc. cetera. Uh, Cambridge and Boston do this. I'm not sure about Somerville. Well, certainly we passed a surcharge such that if basically it's a fee of the sale price goes back to the city um dependent upon you know if you're if if say you're someone who's flipping houses flipping the house then you're going to pay your portion but if you sell it to someone who lives in the house then they don't pay their portion um but if you sell it to say someone who's not going to live into it and is just using it to hide their offshore um money then there's going to be a surcharge on it. But I think I'd have to go back and check on that. That required the legislature to approve it. And, um, you know, my guess is the legislature is probably not friendly to that. Uh, so that uh, that's a third strategy. And I should have mentioned this, but I forgot. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. So, yeah, that is called a transfer fee. And it's basically a fee that, you know, there's different ways you could structure it. Uh, it's often split between the buyer and seller, but it's basically a, a fee when property changes hands. Um, I know Arlington has passed, we authorized a home rule petition asking the legislature to let us do this. And the legislature, I guess, was a little too busy to get to it uh, in the last session. And hopefully, you know, they'll be able to take it up this coming year. Hopefully, and your and Somerville's as well. Hopefully. So with that, I'll continue on to captain um, report. Uh, all of the past, these past meetings have been uploaded to YouTube. Um, they are there for folks to watch. Um, you know, we believe in having a record of all of our meetings so you could come and find out what we say and what we discuss, uh, not just some meeting notes. So uh, some summary. So, unfortunately, uh, due to work, I haven't been able to send out uh, an email, but um, I plan to do that within the next day or two. <clears throat> um, and then there's some other blog posts that need to be scheduled. Um, one other thing. So, um, Joel uh, Thoman um, is interested in taking on the IT role, um, and uh, I I think it would probably be a, a good idea to uh, basically have him act as that role and you know get people organized and get various stuff done. I was thinking like. Um, Basically, setting up a, a Lumio instance or something like that would probably be a good task. So I'll touch base with him and make sure he's on the democracy mailing list. Um, Question. So with that, I mean, just for folks to know, we've got our weekly pirate news. We didn't have it last week, um, but we'll be having it this Sunday. Um, and then I'll... I don't know. That will probably be <laughs> the last until at least the first. So, um, since I, I think probably we, we probably won't do it on Christmas. Um, with that, uh, next up is decisions. Uh, uh, Misty, Joe, are, are there any U.S. Pirate Party issues we need to review? Uh, unfortunately, there was no meeting last week, seeing that AJ was sick. Okay. Uh, I'm expecting one to come up this week, though. So. so hopefully we'll get Misty filled in. There. Do we know what's on that agenda? Has it been posted? No. I know one of the things that I wanted to discuss was the fact that they have the Pirate Council and it's never open to the general public, you know, at least to the officers and the representatives. So that was one of the things that was on that list. 
because I put it on that list, but I couldn't tell you what the rest is on that list. So can can you talk can you talk about what problem you're solving there? I didn't okay, quite get so that. it's it's a Discord change that I'm looking to do. So right now the Pirate Council, so whoever would be a representative. Uh, so basically they were supposed to open it up an hour before before the meeting, right? That never right. happens. So okay. instead of opening up an hour for the meeting, just have people who are official representatives of their spot. So Misty would be on there, for example. I'd be on there as a backup person. And then the Pirate Council, the the people who's doing secretary, treasury, uh, vice officer, officer, or captain, et cetera, would have access to it. I see. And that would be a space for us to discuss post, you know, just another spot for people specifically who are actively registered known members. I see. So, That's folks who who interested. who can't who can't take in the in the take part in the video conference portion can still raise issues that can hopefully be addressed by um, meeting members. Is that does that make sense? Is am I yeah. summarizing so, that right? Kind of, sort of. So, everybody's terrible about posting what they want in the next meeting. This would give us a spot to have a clear spot where we could post like. Hey, can we add this to agenda item to new business? Can we discuss this old business? Can we table this, et cetera? While it's not being in a meeting. So that way, next time we have a meeting, it's like, hey, all this stuff, copy, paste. So a secretary can just copy, paste, and say, hey, this is what we have to discuss. Okay. You know, make it easier for the secretary to say, hey, who, whose idea is what? And then they could just look at that spot and be like, hey, this is all that was discussed this week in this spot. Let's discuss this now. Okay. That Which reminds sense. me, I think I think Misty needs a, a U.S. Pirate Party Wiki account. <laughs> so I'll I'll do that. Um, yeah, I still need that. Um, yeah, looking over at uh, the the Pirate uh, the USPP Discord. Yeah, I don't even see where you would propose a subject for the council to talk about. Like, there's there's not even a channel for it that I see. Currently what you currently what we have to do is we have to privately email Yari. And so instead of having it in a private spot where we just agenda item, this would allow us to have a nice public spot for it. Uh, yeah, so it that everyone makes... can see exactly what we're looking to add and who's adding it, etc. Yeah, it makes sense for us to ask for that specifically because we are in a state with an open meeting law like None of our representatives can meet in private anyways. We're used to that in this state. Yeah, exactly. And then that way it's nice and clean and it's not in it's not just being sent like behind closed doors and secret meetings and for open source government. Sorry if I'm sidetracking the meeting a little bit. No, no, that's that's fine. That's one of the issues so thank you for discussing that issue um yeah i mean i as misty said you know transparency it's what we do so <laughs> yeah. uh, all right with that projects um we have the party conference scheduled for the 21st um that is one month away uh, so I was thinking that in the next email, create, having a form for people to, it, we're only doing two hours, unlike the four we did previously. Um, but having a form where people can suggest topics, um, like half an hour long topics, does that make sense? Um, on half an hour long topics. I came up with a crazy idea, see if you like it. Um, you know how we were thinking about doing public meetings again? How you mean in-person meetings or? In-person meetings. So why, uh, I was thinking this thought came across to me as I was leaving the high school and it was really nice to do a public speaking event because it was good practice. Yes. Are, are we in a position 
with COVID dying down, or when COVID dies down again, then expecting to come back up again with the holidays. But after it dies down again, like maybe in March, April, for us to go to a public place with a loudspeaker and get up on the soapbox, literally, I'll find a soapbox for, for us to stand on or <laughs> some type of step ladder, and we can just start talking and doing a rally. And just start talking about the politics and what's going on with the government. We could do a public pirate news. You know, it's just a crazy thought, but it might just work. You know, get back out there and get people paying attention to who we are and what we're doing. Getting out there is always a good thing. You know, yeah. even if we just set up a table and have like a leaf event whilst one of us is practicing our public speaking, um, it might be better, especially if, if, at least for me, speaking publicly would be something that would be good practice for me to get used to it. I, I realized that today when I was speaking to the students, that if I'm going to be trying to do what we discussed, Jamie, then all the public speaking opportunities I can get is just going to be a benefit. So I, I'm obviously volunteering myself to do this, but I think it would be good practice for any of us. Sounds great to me. I mean, certainly once the weather's warmer, we can always do an outdoor event somewhere or go mapping surveillance cameras or give trainings for how to run for how to run for office and, and all that. So. Well, we can do all three if you want. Absolutely. <clears throat> and people should always be encouraged to take the initiative and do that. Um, so I guess I'll, you know, I said, I'll create the form, send out the email, send a reminder. And then, you know, I mean, it's, it's only two hours, so it's probably less formal than the previous one, but that way we put a little bit of structure about it. And then have a sign up form as well. Although actually we don't, we don't have to, we can just. I can put a link to one of these or something, whatever. Since that's what we're using. One of these meet.coop page uh, rooms that we have. Does meet.coop, this, this whole setup, is this working really well with uploading to YouTube? I mean, I, I'm finding it it works, but that it it does it is a hard it is hardware dependent and may not work for everyone. Steve, Misty, how are you finding the solution? Uh, works fine on mobile. Works fine on an obsolete computer. Works fine on my gaming computer. Um, I haven't tried to call in yet. Um, how does it work over the phone? I'll let you answer the how does it work over the phone question. <laughs> Hi, I just thought this was putting my baby down. Um, you know, it works. It's, I can hear you, obviously, I can't see anything or any of the notes. You guys could be saying, that Joe, what a terrible human being to the notes, I have no idea. But um, to be honest, it does the job. Yeah, uh, no problems using it from my end. I think the, the one limitation I would say is that um, unlike... Jitsi or uh, other tool, uh, other group uh, streaming services, um, you really can't, you can go and you can see people if they turn their camera on, but the recording does not capture that. So I found that to be the, the one limitation that that you can go and show the screen of whatever you're sharing or the stock 
whatever you've set up as your meeting notes or things like that, or not meeting notes, but kind of meeting presentation. Um, but you can't actually just see all the faces of the people who are here, which is sad. Um, so with that, uh, local outreach, um, I'll reach out to our activism director and, and talk with him about, about that, since we need to get that done. Okay. When is our next meeting that we're doing in person? In person? I don't think we have one scheduled. When would you like it to be? Um, uh, I'd say early February. Give it a couple months. Where? I'm thinking let's do some place down in Boston. Um, I can start looking into different libraries and places that we can get in for free. Yeah, that sounds good. No. I, I'm I'm looking for limiting our our cost finances. So someplace that would be both accessible, um, maybe someplace in the Arlington, Somerville, or like Cambridge area. Yeah, I know Cambridge has a library in Central Square. I don't know what it takes to schedule a room. Um, there's also the Somerville. Sorry, go on. Sorry to interrupt. You know the name of the library? Uh, Central Square Public Library, Cambridge. Um, I know the Davis Square branch of the Somerville Library System. They have an, an entirely new building. Um, I can check on that if you want. Oh my God, it's literally called Central Square Public Library. The Cambridge Public Library at Central Square. Forty five Pearl Street. Oh, it's like right there at the junction. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a they have a nice meeting space. All right, I'll look into this tonight and see what I can do to get that book for us. Um, so if not April, maybe March. Sure. Yeah, so the West Branch has a community room with a capacity of 25. Um, actually, they've got two rooms, one with a capacity of six and one with a capacity of 25. Um, and you can book between 30 minutes and three hours. Uh, and they have one that's a capacity of 10, the range room. In Cambridge? They have a 14 room, a 10 room, a 15, and a 200 room. I'm going to press the 10 room. And Somerville booking goes through, they've got openings through the 12th, and then I think their calendar just kind of ends. It's either unavailable or it just, you know, they haven't freed up those spots. I don't know. All right, so let's figure it out and next meeting, see if we can make a decision. Okay, perfect. Thank you for acquiescing my request. <laughs> you can always wear masks. <laughs> So I think the last time we did a meeting like this, it was just me and you, Jamie. Yeah, that one we so did a little we'll... long before yeah. COVID. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's weird, too, because when I did it in my backyard, we had a lot more people that came. So, but hopefully we can, we can make this one a little bit more public and get it going sooner than later. 
Sounds good. Um, so planning again for local elections. Um, we have our our Etherpad set up. And so it has various tasks that need to be done. Um, most especially contacting the potential candidates. So I'll talk with the activism director about that and see what we can do. And then um, the video newsletter, as we mentioned, the pirate news is next Sunday at 7.30. Um, I assume that still works for folks? Yes, yes indeed. Perfect. Uh, and then, Joe, have you had a chance to deal with the PPI application? I have not. I just wrapped up the Treasury stuff for that was way past due for the US PP. I can start okay. looking at that this week. Okay. Upcoming week. And I'm actually looking at the Ring Room right now uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm sorry, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. The 14th through the 18th, they are wide open. Oh, I'm sorry. I take that back. Sunday, they have Sunday and Monday that they're open. <clears throat> so I can get us in there on the 12th. Um, I mean, another possibility is something like Democracy Center in Harvard Square. I know they have um, wheelchair access. So I would, well, actually, I don't, I don't remember if the one in Cambridge does. I know the, the library in West Somerville does. So with that, is there anything else to discuss? Uh, I don't have anything at this time. Okay, Motion so looking at order. Steve, Misty? Nothing else to add today. Nothing here. Okay, so. Um, Someone could pop a link to the notes in the pad, I mean, in the public chat, um, to the pad, or is it in there? Um, hey, Mickey. Hi. Welcome. <laughs> Sorry to be so late. Meetings ran over like at least an hour every one of them today. It was hot. It was L day meetings. <laughs> so, sorry. That's but, okay. Um, Steve Steve put the link to the meeting uh, right. minutes agenda, which is being displayed on the screen um, in in the chat. And I see it's recording, so that's wonderful. Thank you. Yes. And uh, uh, although you, although you don't see it in the chat, there are notes too. <laughs> if Jamie hits, if Jamie refreshes his browser, you will see notes. <laughs> well, that's the thing. You can have shared notes, or you can have public chat. You can't view both. <laughs> oh, sorry. Refresh that browser. Well, it should be. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. refresh that browser. Thank you. Do that. Um let's see so sorry <clears throat> Mickey, is there anything you want to add? Is there any uh anything we should be aware of? Uh, yes, we're in time, and we all know. Let's see. Uh, nothing in particular except some really good news out of Philadelphia. Um, there's a group that is putting up some public phones, and they're going to be run on the GNU Linux system so that phone calls will be free. Nice. So I think that's a good strike for privacy and um, for people who don't want to carry a phone on 
these are these are in essence in in like just mounted the way pay phones once were in a bygone age exactly yes so uh i'm very excited about that can't wait to see it um we have friends in philly that are gonna test it out for us cool report back um also for folks who are um familiar with foia stuff foia requests um there's an effort i'm helping with to identify the locations of all the boston shot spotter locations and if that's something that you're interested in helping with you can send me an email at joke.ef at jamesokeef.org or info at masspirates.org. The shot spotter, that's to pinpoint the location of gunfire or whatnot? Yes. That's that's what they claim, yes. <laughs> All right. Um, I was living in Chelsea for a while, and they were using their shot spotters to find out where people were setting off fireworks because they have all the natural gas out there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it can be used for anything. And it picks up uh, normal voice level conversations too from uh, quite a distance. I, I'm curious, uh, if I recall correctly, um, John, John, I'm spacing on John's last name. His Twitter handle is Ingenerd. Yeah. But uh, he apparently the uh someone put a shot spotter on his building and then took it then sort of half disconnected it and left it dangling up on the roof i wonder if he still has it <laughs> wow. uh i can neither confirm nor deny that that he has it um <laughs> but i'm sure it's one of those things you don't part with um, mm -hmm. unless someone asks for it back <laughs> i mean those things aren't cheap no, but I say we get the request them near all the politicians' homes <laughs> and police people. <laughs> Put one next to Elon's house. Yes, yes exactly. Attach right. it to his jet. <laughs> exactly. And then he'll block you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we'll talk about that in Pirate News. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's funny not <laughs> um cool so uh unless there's anything else shall we adjourn i should say does anyone want to make a motion to adjourn um, motion quick thing yeah before we do i'm so sorry i want i, I want motion to adjourn too but we're talking about a candidate on the national level for president. I don't know if you folks heard of it yet. I've I've not heard of that, no. It's possibly going to be villain supreme. Um you Vermin Supreme? Yeah, 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 that guy. Yeah, okay. I don't know how you feel about that. <laughs> well, love it, but can you see mom and dad voting for him? No. No, yeah. Is he going to help the party or is he going to hurt the party? Is he going to make it, people take it? So let me move to, move to this way. If you have to go and gather 10,000 signatures in the great Commonwealth of Massachusetts to put somebody on the ballot, do you want to put someone on the ballot who's going to get fewer votes than than the 10,000 signatures you need to get. I like Vermin Supreme, but I could be using my time far more efficiently getting our own candidates on the ballot. Just my two cents. As I someone who has helped Nader and, and the Green Party candidate get on the ballot, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so actually, I, I realized we didn't discuss when we next want to meet. Um, 
we could meet the 29th or we could meet the 5th. So which which would you prefer? The 5th. Okay, a motion for the 5th. Uh, do I have a second? I'd lead the 5th. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else is. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I, I will second then. <laughs> uh, all in favor of the fifth? Aye. 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 Any opposed? When, with that, it passes. Um, so our next meeting will be January 5th. These meetings are available uh, for any member to participate in. Um, we will make sure our website is updated with that information. Uh, and with that, since we are at 9.58 p.m. Eastern Motion. Standard Time, uh, sadly not daylight time, or maybe that would be a good thing, I don't know. Um, shall we adjourn? Second. All Aye. Aye. Good night, peoples. Aye. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining everybody. I will now Happy stop holidays. the recording. Motion, <clears throat> we are adjourned.